Hi, my name is Bill Weiss. I'm the author of the book, 23 Minutes in Hell. Thank you for joining me. Can we pray for a person to get out of hell? No, absolutely not. And these next verses were spoken by Jesus. He said in Matthew 25, 46, and these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Now, it is the same Greek word used for everlasting and eternal, the word ionios. So both places are eternal. Matthew 18, 8, 9, cast him into everlasting fire, into hell fire. Mark 3, 29, eternal damnation. Matthew 25, 41, depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire. Now, the belief that you can pray someone out of hell is similar to the doctrine of purgatory and is not found anywhere in the Bible. Now, some believe in a place in between heaven and hell called purgatory. They believe a person can be prayed out of this state of existence. Now, the Bible says there is no such place. There is no purgatory. A person will never escape hell. Now, there are many other verses spoken by God in the Bible regarding hell being eternal. So, once a person dies, their destiny is fixed. Now, Jesus is describing the rich man's situation who went to hell, and part of what Jesus revealed is that the rich man's location cannot be changed. Once a person dies, it is impossible to ever depart from hell. Luke 16, 26 says, And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us. So there is no getting out ever. Now this is describing the current hell, uh, or Hades, and that uh, later on at Judgment Day, it will be cast into the lake of fire forever and ever. And that's in Revelation 14, 10 and 11. Revelation 20, 10, and Revelation 21, 8. Now, Robert A. Peterson states in his book, Hell Under Fire, page 155, he will separate the people of the world and consign them to one of two destinies, eternal punishment or eternal life. And then he goes on to say, at death, Lazarus and the unsaved rich man left their bodies and went to places of bliss and woe, respectively. Jameson, Fawcett, and Brown's commentary, page 946, says, Thus the decision of this awful day will be final, irreversible, unending. Then the MacArthur Bible Commentary, page 1176, states, The punishment of the wicked is as never-ending as the bliss of the righteous. The wicked are not given a second chance, nor are they annihilated. The wicked are forever subjected to the fury and wrath of God they consciously suffer. These next verses also state that there are only two places and each place is eternal. Daniel 12, 2, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to everlasting shame and contempt. Matthew 13, 30, gather you together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Matthew 13, 38, the good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. Matthew 13, 48, and gather the good into vessels, but cast the bad away. Now, good there does not mean you're a good person. The righteous are referred to as the good, and the wicked are those who ignore or reject Jesus Christ and refuse to repent of their sins. Now, Psalms 9, 17 says, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all nations that forget God. So praying for someone who has died and is now in hell is error and is a wasted prayer.